it, it's a weight that is bothering some uh, Tory MPs tonight. You look at the gaps between these phases. Four weeks to review the data, how, how it's going, the first bits of the easing, and then an extra week to prepare whatever sector is being uh, opened up. They are arguing tonight, some of them, that this is just too slow. The Prime Minister is not in danger of losing this uh, uh, plan, having it shredded or anything, or going down to defeat. He's got Labour on side. There aren't enough rebels uh, against him on the Tory benches. But there is that dissatisfaction there. What some Tories are saying tonight is that the Prime Minister has been swallowed up a bit by the scientists. Steve Baker, uh, one of the most vociferous, is saying uh, that the plan is a hammer blow to many businesses and that the Prime Minister is following modelling, not the data that he says uh, that he is following. Well, a lot of the scientists would say you have to uh, model the data, otherwise it just doesn't uh, make any sense at all. But what we do see today, I think, is the Prime Minister, as he was speaking to the House of Commons and outlining uh, the path out of lockdown, who has moved closer to the scientists than he was in the autumn when we came out of uh, lockdown then. This is a script which you feel has their fingerprints on it much more than then. And in a sense, you could say he's learned some lessons from that experience. We've been talking uh, since the beginning of the year about how he's stopped what some aides around him even openly call uh, over-promising and he's trying to rein in expectations. Well, this plan, with all its pauses, all its gradualness, not until uh, well into June uh, can a grandparent hug their child. I mean, this is a cautious plan. And the Prime Minister is saying, well, when you look around the world, I'm not just the only Prime Minister who's learned from experience. Other countries are, who are contemplating or stepping out of lockdown are going very cautiously as well. I'm in the mainstream on this, is what the Prime Minister was saying uh, to the MPs in there. Another interesting thing he said when he was talking there was just how much we have to expect, even with a cautious plan, a continuing death toll in the tens of thousands. And the data that the, uh, that the government has put out today, the modelling uh, that, they, that they based this, uh, all, all, this, uh, all, all this information uh, on, that suggests potential death tolls of 30,000, uh, even as we come out of lockdown. So what do we know today? We know that uh, education uh, is going to open, schools opening within two weeks, but the rest of it, well, that's a very uncertain uh, future and one that is quite drawn out. Locked down and empty. And it'll be some time yet before city centres like Coventry are fully back to life. 16 weeks before all restrictions might be lifted and the economy is fully opened up. The government's been deluged with scientific advice warning this must be a slow exit from lockdown to avoid another huge surge in infections. I sympathise very much with the exhaustion and the stress that people are experiencing and that businesses are experiencing after so long in lockdown. But to them, and to them all, I say that today the, really is, the end really is in sight. Venues like this Coventry nightclub have months to wait before opening. They're hoping converting parts of the building for seated events We'll keep them going. The last 12 months have been absolutely terrible, um, as it has for a lot of the venues across the country. But I think with the, um, with the hope that we actually have a light at the end of the tunnel now, I think it's, it's a case of we will stick it out for the next six months. In two months' time, the government hopes to have vaccinated over 50s and those with health concerns, the groups that make up 99% of COVID deaths. The Prime Minister was asked why that didn't allow an earlier release from lockdown. <laughs> For what reason, once they've been vaccinated and protected from COVID uh, by the end of April at the latest, are, are, is there any need for restrictions to continue? I'm afraid it's, it's, it's pure uh, mathematics. There is still a substantial body of risk. It's simply because, although a lot of people are getting vaccinated and we're doing very well at rolling out the vaccine, there are these gaps left because the vaccine is imperfect and um, not everybody is, is able to receive the vaccine that mean that we can't just let transmission go to a very high level. Some of the Prime Minister's own MPs believe he's following risk-averse scientists too closely. One minister said he simply learnt stuff from last year.
Numbers for patients being admitted to hospital were brought down by the first lockdown, one of the key indicators allowing Boris Johnson in June to announce the lockdown over. Our long national hibernation is beginning to come to an end. But after two months, the hospitals were beginning to fill up again. The November lockdown followed, but lasted only a month. In England, we've ended national restrictions, opening up significant parts of the economy. As many scientists predicted, hospital admissions shot up and the winter crisis and some 50,000 deaths followed. Some Tory MPs complaining that Boris Johnson's been captured by scientific modellers like you. If he has, you'd say, good thing. A whole bunch of scientists, myself included, that were clamouring for a circuit breaker back in early October because we saw that there was a really concerning rise in cases. And of course, it came quite late in November. And then um, we saw again a surge in cases as we approached Christmas with this Christmas relaxation that was on the cards. It's really, really important that we follow the data. The Prime Minister hinted that the budget next week could prolong support for businesses and employees who can't work because of Covid rules. But some aren't sure if they can make it to the last phase of this roadmap. A 15-minute taxi ride from Coventry, Birmingham Airport. This cab company is losing a million pounds turnover a month. The Prime Minister said there'd be a review in April of international travel rules. With the managing director of this firm, the last 12 months has been like a long boxing match. We've been sort of knocked down and we've got back up again and we've brushed ourselves down uh, and there's been positive things that have happened and we're thinking, well, we might win that round and then we go to the next round and we've, we've had 11 and we've been up and down over those. Um, our legs right. are extremely weak. The bell's going to go for the, for the 12th round. Um, will we survive? <sighs> I don't know.